Hello to everyone and thanks for watching today. Dana and I appreciate it and if you have not yet subscribed to our weekly channel, it'd help us gain favor with the YouTube algorithms. Today we're bringing you another awesome vehicle from the Phoenix area. You may remember Brian Parks, a retired firefighter who's had collector cars most of his life. Last year in June, we featured Brian's stunning 1940 Mercury 8 convertible in episode number 89. At the time, we also spotted this super cool 1966 Ford F100 in his garage. So sit back and enjoy the video. Again, thanks for stopping by today. We appreciate all the support. Now, let's go for a ride. My name is Brian Parks and I drive a 1966 Ford F100 pickup. I've had this truck since 1991 and I bought it from my neighbor here in Phoenix, Paul Gray, who bought it brand new at Reed Mellon Ford here in Phoenix. The reason I wanted this truck, my very first truck that I had when I actually bought this truck was a 1965 Ford F100 pickup, but it was just a standard cab with six cylinder, three speed standard transmission, uh, no chrome on it. Um, I first saw this truck in 1980 when my wife and I first got married and bought a house, and Paul Gray was our neighbor. And he knew that when he sold this truck, that I wanted to be the first one in order to buy it. Um, in about 1991, Paul bought a new truck. But then this truck sat in front of his house for about a month before he finally decided to sell it to me. When I got it, the truck had about 101,000 miles on it. Uh, Paul used this truck mostly for hunting. He was a, a big hunter, uh, did a lot of hunting in Utah and Colorado. So this truck always had a camper shell on it. And when I got it, it had a camper shell. And then I changed the different camper shell. And this truck has been my life, you know, in my life for a long time. Um, when I got the truck, it was in pretty good condition. It had original paint. It was Wimbledon White's original color on the truck. It had uh, big toe and mirrors on the side that were actually bolted the doors. And it was just a hunting truck. Um, so the truck that I've got, you know, I've done everything to the truck since I've had it. Like I said, I bought it in, in 1991, so I've had it about 31 years. It's got a 352 V8 engine. It's got a three-speed, the three-speed stock uh, standard automatic to cruise-o-matic transmission. It's got a positive traction rear end. It's twin I-beam front end. 
Um, since I've had it, I put front disc brakes from a 1970 Ford F100. Um, I rebuilt the motor in about 2007 when the truck had about 170,000 miles on it, the engine jump time. And so I knew I had to rebuild the engine. So the engine had to come out and I wanted to paint it under the, ho under the hood. So I decided at the same time just to repaint the truck. So the truck was repainted Wimbledon white, the stock color in about 2007 by uh, Jazzy Auto Body and Paint. Uh, very nice paint job on it. Um, it's got, when I redid the engine, I put an Edelbrock four barrel manifold on it. I put a four barrel Edelbrock AVS2 carburetor on it, which makes it a lot more responsive as far as off the line. Um, I went with dual exhaust with the long gla glass back mufflers and Patriot headers on it, stainless steel headers. Um, the, the exhaust, the sound of this truck is very unique. The exhaust actually terminates right behind the, the, the mufflers and they're pointed down at the asphalt so it resonates off it. So it's got a very, very unique sign. Everybody knows my truck just by the sound. It also has an underdash air conditioning unit that was actually installed at Sears, um, Sears Auto Center at uh, the Colonnade in 1966. Uh, Paul, who owned the truck originally, was actually a salesman in the auto center at Sears for many, many years. And I've got the receipt from when he put this air conditioner. I think it was like $101 to have the air conditioner installed the whole kit. I'm still running the R12, uh, the original Freon in that air conditioner system also runs. It's very cold, cools very well. I've also put American Racing wheels on the truck too. That gives it a very nice look also compared to the stock wheels. Since I've had the truck, I've done about everything. There's probably nothing I haven't touched on that truck. It's completely redone. I drive it frequently. When I've got it, it was my daily driver. You know, this was a truck I bought was a, a used truck. And now it's become a classic truck. The truck has right now, you know, I said I rebuilt it about 170,000 miles, got about 195,000 on the, on the truck. Starts right up, it runs very good. I can, I can drive it and I feel comfortable taking the truck any place. My future plans for this truck, I'm gonna keep it as long as I'm here. You know, it's gonna be in my truck forever. You know, it's been part of my family for years. My kids grew up with this truck. Uh, they were babies when I got this truck. Uh, the truck was my daily driver for years. We had car seats in it, booster seats. We hauled the kids to baseball games, to track meets all over the place. Uh, we used the truck. We carried dirt bikes in it for years when the kids were smaller. So the truck has been part of our life for, for, for as long as I can remember. Um, the favorite thing, like I said, you know, I bought it as a used truck and it became a classic truck. But I think the, the biggest thing has been part of the family. It's a, it's a family member. When my kids were learning to drive, I would let them drive it in the neighborhood. And the truck doesn't have power steering. So it seems like when you make a turn, it takes about three turns of this big steering wheel to get it to go around a corner. Like I said, it handles well, but just driving it, it's still an old car. And that's just the characteristics of it. Um, back when my son was in high school, he took it to school one day because we needed he needed to get to school. We couldn't take him. So that was before the motor was built and the truck would cut out. You'd have to feather the gas to make the truck go. So he drove it to school at Paradise Valley High and driving home, he didn't feather it quite right and the truck died in the middle of the intersection for him. So that's the memory we have with this truck. So like I said, it's been part of the family for years. Paul Gray, who bought this truck originally, um, passed away about two years ago. And before he passed away, he was actually in a care facility out in Chandler. So he hadn't seen my truck for a long time. So I was able to take it down for him to see it. And he was really, really happy to see the old truck again, especially the way it's been taken care of, it's been maintained. Um, when Paul passed away, I actually was able to get his truck that he had currently, which is the 1994 Ford F-150. It's a four-wheel drive, it's, it's like 46,000 miles, it's like a new truck. So I actually not only have one of his trucks, I have two of the trucks where Paul Gray's. And like I said, Paul was a second father to me.
Brian's 66 Ford is a testament to how cool old trucks are. They have an inherent charm and appeal that a late model truck will never have. Thanks, Brian, for your time. Join us again next Sunday as we bring you a one-family-owned 1970 Dodge Charger. You'll hear the story of one man's lifetime experience with one of Chrysler's all-time classic designs. Don't miss this one. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Until next Sunday, please remember to be careful out there.